Hello, folks. Welcome to Land Timber Stream. It's Thursday night, Friday Eve. Uh, one of my favorite days. Um, good to have everyone here to join us on Land Timber Stream. It's going to be a brief one tonight. I always say that, and I always end up finding some interesting topic to discuss or chat about. But it, it, there's not much on the agenda tonight. <laughs> um, we've got 20 days to go. So as of tomorrow, it will be down to um, the teens. Right. Um, make me a little nervous, but, you know, hey, we got to just keep on trudging along and getting as ready as we can for that CCIE writing and switching written exam. Uh, day 341 of this journey of the our vlog, number 341, really, of this journey. Uh, stream bling update. Yes, last night I actually stayed up kind of late and figured out how to use this light. Uh, the new light I got, which is here, uh, the ring light. And it's pretty cool. I actually tested it. I posted a video or a photo of it on uh, the Instagram account. But I got the diffuser on, and the diffuser is like really tiny. And I had no idea. <laughs> I struggled with it. I finally found a YouTube video to show me how to do it. And got that on, and that makes a difference. It's not so difficult, you know, to look at. It's, it's, it's bright, but the light is diffused. So that's definitely, I, I don't know if that comes with it. It did come with a kit that I bought. But definitely worth it. And I would definitely Google how to put the diffuser on <laughs> for these ring lights, these new newer ring lights. Um, anyway, got that on and play with a little bit. I have not played yet with the there are there is another cover. And I try to go too deep into you know stream um tech here, but uh Basically, I tr also I tried this mount, this phone mount, and took a few shots with it. It looks pretty good. Uh, but right now I'm using this white cover. This is the, yeah, this is what I'm talking about, the diffuser. And it's really small when you pull it out of the box, like really small. But uh, it has these different colors, uh, what's it called? Color filters. Yeah, so this is what's on there now. I may try this one just to see. And you can get other color filters for this thing as well. And I'd just be curious to see what what those do. But the result so far has been awesome. Just great. Um, shout out to Dude For Him. So Dude For Him, it, tomorrow is his written exam. So we talked about this already. Just wishing him the best. Hoping for the best. Sending him good bits. And I did send him a question today, which I have down here. You know, we've been exchanging questions f f uh, with each other, testing each other's knowledge for quite a while now on Twitter. So anyway, um, just wish him the best. What more can I say? Not going to say too much more. Good luck, my friend. Um, and then a, a thought about nothing can re replace experience. I was working with what, what brings up this topic is just today I was working on some BGP stuff. Uh, again today and I had a question about a configuration and I knew that I had studied this already but the thought occurred to me man it's just you know I'm working so much these days on DevOps and cloud related things still networking there's still networking involved but um, nothing replaces preparing for a CCI routing and switching exam like doing routing and switching every day on Cisco gear, for example. So I, I do miss that somewhat. I don't regret uh, my decision by any means uh, in terms of, you know, kind of what I'm doing these days. But I, I just have to say, no amount of study until you actually implement something, uh, you know, implement a technology, you can read about it all day long, at least in my case. And nothing is provides more value in learning that you know, knowledge or that protocol than having to implement it and having to tweak some feature of that protocol or resolve, you know, troubleshoot a some sort of, you know, routing loop issue or routing black hole or something like that. Nothing can replace that experience. So what I've, you know, my thinking on that today was, you know, let's say I fail this written again and again and again. Um, I think what it's, it may come down to is Cisco always recommends that you have a certain amount of experience before taking the exam. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'd have to uh, do some side projects or get back to doing some labbing 
before I attempted the rent. Of course, I don't count on that happening. I would count on passing in 20 days. But to me, it just seems like that is the element that is missing for me uh, on some of these protocols is just practice and using it, you know, especially in a real world, real world experience, you know, IRL. Um, working the protocol, it always sticks better than just about anything you can do a lab, in my opinion. Uh, so anyway, uh, that, that's a good thought to keep in mind for people who are striving for certifications, uh, in a particular certification, try to get as much experience as you can in that area or, you know, seek, you know, I don't know what your employment is now. Hopefully it is in that field. If it's not, try to get a routing and switching related job, you know? Um, nothing will really, not much anyway, I think can help you prepare better than for a difficult, an exam with this difficulty level than real world experience. Anyway, written plan, like I said, should be brief. I, I'm not at 400 of the 500 questions, but I have decided that I'm down to 20 days and I don't want to get in this trap of spending too much time in Boson like I think I did the first time around. So I think however far I get tonight, that's where I'm going to stop in the boson. Uh, I won't get to 500 for sure. I'll just end the exam. I've been saving it every time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've already got it running back here. Um, and I got the 300, the high 300s uh, yes, last night. Um, but I'm going to get to, you know, whatever I get to tonight, it'll probably be 400. I'm going to stop, end it, and then start, you know, reviewing the results. Uh, reviewing the results of like the questions missed and identify some of those, mark some of those in my blueprint checklist, my blueprint grading list. Um, that's kind of my strategy. Um, so after that, let me just write this out, right? Uh, starting tomorrow, uh, we'll do um, eval. Mark up blueprint eval list, checklist. And I'm not going to start hitting those areas just yet. What I'll do after that is, um, this may spill into Saturday, but I'm going to go into my written fail notes. Mark up blueprint eval checklist. And then starting Saturday, I hope, um, We'll have an uh, um, attack plan for the last excess days for those weak areas. Um, and we'll do review, review, review. And attack plan, that means, I don't know if that means labs. It probably will mean labs, in particular like QoS. I'm pretty sure, I can already tell you, I'm going to be doing some QoS labs, maybe as early as Saturday. Um, so anyway, that's the, uh, that's the approach going forward. And uh, no real links to share today. I did not have a lot of time. Um, a lot of links I get from Twitter or Router Gods or something like that. I did not get any time with that today. And, and the time I did have, I didn't really see any good links um, to, to share per se. But uh, we'll go into quiz time. So here's the question of the day. Uh, by default, which? And this should be for, let's see, N and NSSA. So in an OSPF in SSA, not so stubby area. Assuming there are ASBRs. Well, we'll just, of course, we can assume if we're asking this question. Um, with multiple ABRs, which one performs? the type 7 to type 5 LSA translations. So just think about that in your head, or you can pop it in chat if uh, so inclined. Uh, again, in an OSPF not so stubby area with multiple area border routers, which ABR performs the type 7 to type 5 LSA translation. So just as a review here, anybody CCS, studying CCA level knows this, but um, 
you have multiple OSPF area types. You know, you have a uh, backbone uh, area or area zero. You have a regular area. Um, you have a stub area. You have a totally stubby area. And then you have a not so stubby area. I believe totally stubby area might be um, might be Cisco proprietary. Um, anyway, you have a not so stubby area, which um, a not so stubby area is a stub, but it has ASBRs inside the area, and it does advertise that area will advertise uh, LSA type fives within the not so stubby area. However. It does not accept type fives. What it does is the ASBRs will send LSA type sevens, flood that into the NSSA. And then one of the ABRs is selected, not more than one, just one ABR selected by default. You can change this behavior, but by default, one ABR is selected to convert the type seven to a type five and then to flood it into the backbone. So the question here again is, which Gray Fox, how are you doing? Uh, hope, hope you're doing well. I know it's later for you. Um, I'm doing well, man. 20 days. Starting to get a little bit nervous here. Uh, <laughs> but everything's under control. It's just giving me drive to study harder. Um, but yeah, we're doing great. Uh, sporting a new light. I um, uh, hope you're doing well as well, Gray Fox. Hope you're having a good uh, Friday. Or sorry, Thursday night. I'm already making it Friday. It already feels like a Friday in some ways. But yeah, we've got... Uh, so let's say there are two ABRs. Um, and let's say you had, in an NSSA, you had several ASBRs, and you had a total of like 100 um, LSAs. 100 type 7 LSAs. So it is important that you do select a single ABR to do the conversion because you don't want to flood. Um, if you have two ABRs, you don't want to flood 200 LSAs into backbone area zero. That's inefficient. Uh, just select one, right? And um, the ABR will have the, um, well, there will be type fours as well, right? For the ASBRs. So the shortest path can be calculated. Of course, that can be changed to and modified. Um, and that's a whole other discussion, right? But uh, do you remember when I was in your chat and told you that I'm preparing for a job interview? Yes, I do. And guess what? I'm starting on January 7th. Oh, that's awesome, Gray Fox. Uh, I am a Linux sys admin. Well, that is great, man. I know that when you talked about it, you weren't real certain about the job, it seemed. And maybe it was kind of a stretch for you to to grow into that position, but uh, I'm so glad you got it. Uh, that makes me feel good because I know that feeling, and I know that uh, when I took on for the first time a network engineer position, I was coming from a non-network engineer position, not a really a full-time one. So the employer had to take a little bit of leaf of faith, and they did. And it was after they had you know, hired someone else and that person left. So I wasn't necessarily the first choice, but I got in and, um, you know, that is great. Um, I'm curious, uh, Gray Fox, uh, any particular, uh, variants of Linux that you're going to be working on and, uh, or specializing in? Uh, I mean, is it just a kind of the generic, uh, CentOS and, you know, Red Hat or are there other sort of, uh, Linux experience you're going to be working with? I'm curious. Mark Milo, in the house. How are you, my man? Is the ABR translation selection not based on router ID as well? Okay. Mark Milo, you are correct. It is based on router ID, um, which makes sense, right? Because obviously, you know, if you're looking for a way to tie, router ID is going to have to be unique anyway. So the question is, though, um, which router ID? Uh, it is based on router ID, but what criteria is used on those router router IDs? So you're close, man. You're 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 warm, really hot. Uh, Gray Fox, thank you, man. Uh, it's Debian. Okay, that's cool. Debian is actually it's interesting because I have I come from um, 
uh, what is it called? The different branches. There's a really cool chart out there I saw back when I was just like really into Linux. I mean, I, I considered li shifting from networking into Linux. Here it is. I love this chart. So a lot of my experience is, so there's your Debian. Oh, I want to download this thing. What's well, an SVG? That's fine. Oh, is this a distribution timeline? Yeah, I didn't really want the timeline. You got SUSE, Red Hat. Now, there's something else I'm thinking of. This is not the chart I was looking for. There's a chart on Linux uh, distribution like families. Fedora. So I was really into Fedora, but there's a level below that. Fedora based OpenSUSE. What am I thinking of? There's another chart I'm looking for. Well, I don't recall saying this in, uh, in specific, but I would imagine the highest router ID. You are correct, Mark Milo. Good. That is a great guess. Okay, so you've got the kernel uh, branches. Linux kernel branches. Oh, what am I thinking of? Okay, distributor. So I was big into Fedora and Ubuntu. And of course you got Debian, which they say, I don't know how true this is, but they say that, um, oh wow, this is interesting. Um, they say that, of course, OS X is based uh, on Debian. So that's actually, I don't know a whole lot about Debian. In fact, um, I oftentimes, some of the Linux commands that I used to use in Fedora, I have to look them up. What is the equivalent of Debian? Because there are some, there are enough differences to make it kind of annoying if you're really used to one and not the other. Um, GNOME, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, I'm more familiar with GNOME or GNU, GNU Linux based. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, like GNU is a major branch. Some people say GNU or GNU. Um, platforms, microkernel type. Okay, Unix like. Let's see if the. Okay, this might be it. Okay, yes. This is kind of. I think this is what I was looking for. So, this is a chart about Unix like families. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, BSDOS, macOS, interesting. I mean, great to see you. Hey, Cassetics, maybe free BSD, open BSD. So yes, BSD based. I'm thinking of like the family level. Um, and there used to be a chart showing, this is more like a timeline. Uh, let's see, Linux family tree. There we go. Hopefully not of the person himself but that's okay maybe this is it that's the article I was on that's a red hat family tree Debian Ubuntu for some reason I was, I was thinking that Fedora and Ubuntu are both part of the GNU family
Okay, here we go. I don't know. It's kind of the it's kind of a difficult thing to just classify, you know, because it's open source and you anybody can make their own version of Linux. I even tried to compile my own version one time on vacation. How sick is that? Like that's how much I was into uh Linux at the time. Yeah, I'm not finding it. Now now it kind of annoys me uh that I can't find it. List of Linux distributions is going to be the same, isn't it? Yeah. So RPM based, CentOS, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Debian based, Pac Man, Gen 2, independent. Interesting. All right. I, I've uh, carried on long enough on this. Anyway, the answer is uh, you are correct. Um, highest router ID. Good job there, Mark Milo. So, yeah, I get excited. As you can tell, Gray Fox, whenever I get start talking about Linux, I get kind of excited because it's, you know, computing at its core. I said, Explorer is a Red Hat branch to test new software lines, and Ubuntu is a Debian based Linux. Correct. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I use Fedora because I thought I might, you know, have an interest later in becoming a what Gray Fox is now, a Linux sysadmin. And I thought for that reason, it would be important to know Red Hat. And so I thought, well, you know, Fedora is what Red Hat is going to be later. Generally speaking, they test the features in Fedora. So that's why I became, Fedora became my main distro. Um, at first, I did Ubuntu, actually, like a lot of people uh, did Ubuntu or they do Mint or something like that. And just to get kind of used to, you know, the operating system itself and the and gnome you know the the gui um and so i did that just to get used to it but then once i got you know once i started digging into it and seeing the power of linux uh I'm like okay i'm ready to move on to more you know uh power user version of linux and that's when i went with fedora and then i i was like okay i really want to go hardcore let me do CentOS on my laptop, be my main. And then I was like, okay, well, let me just compile my own, you know, from the kernel. Let me just compile my own distro. And I stopped at that point. And I was by that time already really swinging more, realizing I wanted to be more of a, of a networking person. Or doors a Red Hat branch? Yeah. Yep, good stuff. All right, guys, we've talked a good bit. I have talked a good bit. And uh, not much else to say. Again, good luck to um, our friend, dude, for him taking an exam tomorrow. And vote if you have not yet, folks. This is a bitly link to the uh, IT, to the uh, Cisco sponsored, hosted IT blog awards. And I know many of you have, but if you're not, there's a, I, we're on the short list for best podcast or video series. And I just want to thank everyone for their support. I really appreciate it. And uh, sending good bits out to your universe. Hope everyone in your, you know, think about this weekend. That's what I'm trying to do. Think about this weekend and how I'm going to make the most of it in terms of, you know, are there any labs I hope to get done or completed? Any chapters I hope to get done? Um, you know, what is your goal? What are you going to do this weekend to make the most of your studies towards getting that cert? So thanks so much for stopping by, folks. Uh, appreciate all the folks in the chat, and we shall see you. I don't stream Friday nights um, just due to that's my night off from streaming, but I will be back on Saturday and probably doing some labs. So thanks so much for stopping in, folks, and we will see you back here soon in Land Timber Stream.